Well, hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today for the Alamo Mortgage Holdings webinar. We have such an exciting webinar we're going to present today. We're going to talk about how you can earn a significant passive income easily by purchasing our corporate income bond. And then we invest into the United States. We purchase packages of mortgage notes. So, uh, but before I go through this presentation, I want to first uh, read a legal disclaimer. It'll be very short, and then we'll go through the actual fun part of the presentation. So as accredited investors, you will be aware that all investments carry some level of risk. This investment is only available to investors who are able to assess their own appetite for risk. So please read the risk statement within the investment memorandum before investing. Okay, well, fantastic. So here is a product fact sheet for the Alamo Mortgage Holdings financial product. We offer a fixed income loan note. We offer a bond and we pay an 8% passive income across the board. So it's very easy. You can get 8%. Uh, and the suggested investment is 100,000 pounds. But if you're a new investor, we can work with you. We can do less than that. Uh, we offer interest. It is paid 8% annually, but it's actually paid biannually. The term is three to 50 years, so you can lock in that long term. And that is a big advantage if you go for a longer term, because then as the years pass, if the interest rates end up going in a direction that's more favorable, <clears throat> you'll be locked in for long term. So the team that we have in place, we'll have 200 years of business experience. And basically our team, what we do is we locate mortgage notes in the state of Texas, and then we purchase those mortgage notes for cash. And that allows us to pay passive income to, to you. And uh, it is something where you can get that mailbox money. So just fantastic. Then we, let's go through the team. Our team has 200 years of business experience with over 100 years in the mortgage and real estate industry in Texas. Uh, we have team members that are managing investment funds, companies and projects worldwide, have overseen up to a billion in financial assets. Members of our team have also worked with Microsoft, Chevron, Exxon, Eventbrite, and Fora Financial. So a little bit about my background. I'm a businessman. I um, am also the managing director and founder of Alamo Mortgage Holdings. However, prior to founding Alamo Mortgage Holdings, I was very focused on real estate and mortgage note investing in the United States. I ended up purchasing a multi-million dollar portfolio of commercial and residential assets. I also got interested in private business acquisitions in the US and Europe. Uh, I've founded several startup businesses and I just have a background in international business. Uh, I'm also the director of an emerging market bond fund and I'm on the board of various companies throughout the world. My business philosophy is simply summed up as every problem has multiple solutions. So, and I'm a graduate of the University of Colorado at Boulder, double major economics and Russian studies. Okay, so Marina Zaharelska, she's our international investment coordinator, and she is so smart. She is so talented. She graduated from the international uh, business from the EU from the EU business school. She graduated with a degree in international relations, and she speaks five languages. She speaks English, Italian, Spanish, Russian, and Ukrainian. Her native Ukrainian, and so. She speaks a lot of a uh, lot of languages, and uh, she likes to work with our investors. And if you have a particular language you like to communicate in, she can she can communicate with you. Very good, very good. Okay, so Scott Wynn, he's a he's an experienced guy in Texas. He uh, he's an industry expert for Alamo Mortgage Holdings. He brings thirty plus years of experience in owner financed real estate notes, residential and commercial loan originations, buying, repairing, selling houses, bulk REO and non-performing note portfolio purchases. So uh, his one of his specialties is actually taking an asset that's not producing income, maybe a mortgage note that has stopped paying 
and then getting it to pay income again. So he's someone that adds a lot of a uh, lot to the team. He studied at Texas A and M, studied economics. We have Fred Hobbs. He's our director of mortgage servicing, and uh, he has been a mortgage originator licensed in the state of Texas since the year 2000. He's also the founder and the president of Texas Mortgage Capital. Uh, he has been involved in thousands of private money residential notes, and he has originated thousands of loans for seller finance investors and private investors in both the residential and the commercial markets. We have David Jones. He's our in-house legal counsel. He's a licensed attorney in the state of Texas and a third generation lawyer. He is so uh, good at uh, at real estate and legal issues. Uh, um, he's currently a fee attorney for Texas Title Company. Uh, and he's has experience with uh, all sorts of uh, transactions, residential, commercial, um, a lease transaction, title curative matters, document preparation. He also practices business and asset protection strategies. So he really brings a wealth of experience and, and he helps Alamo in terms of looking over the legal documents, making sure that everything is in proper order and that Alamo is properly protected. We have Anna Kulakova. She's a specialist with investor relations and she uh, she like, she is originally from uh, Moscow, Russia. She speaks English, Russian and Ukrainian. She works with investors to answer their questions on how Alamo mortgage holdings can generate passive income uh, for the unique investment goals. So very good. We have Mark DeRider. He is the chief technical officer. Uh, Mark brings a wealth of experience with financial software and particularly mortgage software. Uh, if any of you have used any mortgage software, there's a possibility that some of the software you've used has actually been architected by, by Mark. He's so, so good at that. And uh, he's he he helps us with making sure that we've got the latest technology. We have um, the product that we offer is a three year, a five year, and a fifty year bond. We pay eight uh, percent. Now let's take a look at why do so many UK investors still purchase gilts? This is a great question. If you're not from the UK, a gilt is a government bond in the United Kingdom. So I'm going to play a short clip here. Now. Let me let me go through this here. If you're if you're looking to purchase gilts, let's say you're looking around and you've bumped into this video and you're looking to purchase gilts, you probably are in the situation where you want reliable way, you want a reliable way to obtain passive income and gilts would fit this requirement. The problem with gilts though is they are denominated in British pounds and the pound has a decades long history, a tradition of losing value against the US dollar. Another problem with purchasing gilts is that the returns they offer are lower than corporate income bonds. They're always lower. Interest on all registered gilts is payable gross without deduction of tax. Holders of gilts on the register maintained by CIS may opt to have tax deducted at source by applying to CIS. Gilts, of course, have their merits. And for an investor, this is important, gilts have their merits. And for an investor that can turn a blind eye to the high rates of inflation. So if you're the type of investor that can see all that high inflation in the United Kingdom and you can just shut your eyes, turn a blind eye and say, I don't see it, that is one of the requirements. Uh, the, second, uh, the second requirement is if you can also, with your other eye, uh, turn a blind eye to the weakening British pound, if you can just ignore that for decades your pound has lost value against the dollar. Ever since Bretton Woods, it's lost, it's lost and lost and weakened against the US dollar. Uh, then if you're that type of investor, then yeah, you can accept gilts and, and you'll get paid on time and you'll get some passive income and it'll be great. And they're index linked and you can, you can go to sleep and just 
you, you turned a blind eye on both of the problems and hey, everything's good. Yet the fact that gilts are easier to purchase and more well-known does not mean you will earn as much interest. If you were to instead purchase my company, Alamo Mortgage Holdings, we offer a corporate income bond. If you were to purchase a corporate income bond through Alamo Mortgage Holdings, you could potentially earn hundreds of basis points more per year on your corporate income bonds than those old gilts. If you're interested in purchasing a bond, you can contact me directly by emailing ben.meller at alamomortgageholdings.co.uk or call me. I've got a U.S. number, one for the United States and then area code 817-203-4160. We can have a discussion about your passive income goals and also your investment goals. If after that discussion, the product seems suitable for your investment portfolio, you then can sign some paperwork that will be prepared based on the term of the bond you are looking for and some other features. If you currently have British pounds and you want to exchange for US dollars, that's easy to do. We simply handle the conversion for you and then your bond is paid in dollars. At the point it is converted, you have made a dollar denominated investment and no longer will potentially lose money on the exchange rate if the US dollar keeps rising against the British pound sterling. If you are in the situation where you have pounds and normally would want to purchase gilts, but you're looking at all this inflation and the pound endless. So that's real important to think about it because uh, it's something that is a lot of investors, particularly in the United Kingdom, they they are not thinking about how much that exchange rate is potentially working against them. So, okay, so let's imagine that there's a bond that costs, uh, excuse me, let's imagine there's a mortgage note that has 100,000 in uh, debt that is owed on it, an unpaid balance on a mortgage note of 100,000. And let's say it pays a 10% interest. If you were to purchase that note, for 70,000, the effective yield on that is 14.2%. But we actually do that for you. We make it easy where you can just purchase a bond. We pay you 8%. And then we go, we source the notes, we negotiate, we collect the payments. We do all of that for you. So we're able to get, for example, a 14.2% and then easily pay 8% on the passive income. So it's something where if you like mailbox money and you don't want to work with, uh, you know, doing a lot of work, finding notes, negotiating, doing a lot of legal due diligence, or maybe you don't have the experience, Alamo Mortgage Holdings can work for you and you can get the passive income. Okay, so now let's talk about what determines the value of a mortgage note. So then what determines the value of mortgage debt, because we know what determines the value of real estate. Real estate is determined by the value of a particular flat or house. It's determined by what are comparable houses and flats. What do they sell for? That determines the value. If it's a commercial property, it's determined differently where it's determined by the cash flow on the commercial property. But for this example, if we talk about uh, a mortgage note on, say, a property, or maybe a residential home, there's six, there's six factors that determine the value of a mortgage note. The first factor is the buyer. So if you had a choice between buyers, say you have a property, and you're trying to decide who to sell the property to, and you've got one person that is a government employee, and that government employee has a high salary. They've been working for many years for the government. Maybe they work as a post office person. Maybe they deliver packages for the post office, and they've been doing this for 10 years. The If the government is their employer, you know there's a the very high probability they're going to get paid on time. But if you have another buyer that says, you know, I'm 24 years old and I just started my new company and I'm just going to make a bunch of money with my company. 
and they don't have a regular income, but they have a plan where they're going to make money in the future, that sort of buyer is far less desirable. It's better to sell the asset to one that has a regular government income, the government employee, or the one that works at some sort of a big corporation. Maybe they work at Microsoft. Maybe they work at Google. Maybe they work at some big corporation. That buyer is more likely to be able to pay, where they are not going to have cash flow experiences where the things are up or down. The second thing that determines the value is the collateral. So the collateral means the actual asset. So let's say that the property is worth 100,000. Say that's the market value. That's the real value, 100,000. But say that you had a seller that he sold the property with a note for 200,000. Pretend he found somebody who didn't know the prices. And that person agreed to, to pay 200000 even though the market value is only 100000 You have to treat that note differently because the fact that he found somebody that signed a note and the asset's only worth hundred, but he found someone that signed a note for two hundred dollars does not make the note worth two hundred. dollars You could look at that note and you could base it on the value of the collateral. So that's a mistake is a lot of times people don't look at the collateral, they just look at the value of the debt. And when they see the value of the debt, they may not have properly analyzed what's the collateral worth. The third factor that drives the value is the down payment, the money that the buyer initially paid. So let's say you had two buyers, one that put 30%, 40% of the purchase price where if it was 100,000, maybe that buyer put down 30,000, 40,000, 30 or 40%. And then say another buyer said, you know what? I wanna buy this, I'll pay you the 100,000, but I only have $1,000. I only can put down 1,000. Can you finance 99,000? And the seller agreed. So they both agreed to buy the asset for 100,000, but one of them put down 20,000. Another put down only a thousand. The one that put down the larger down payment is better because there's less risk of the person saying, you know what? I don't want this. I'm just going to leave. I'm just going to move. I'm just going to, you know, do because because he's got virtually nothing to lose. He lost a thousand dollars, his down payment. But the one that put 20,000 or 30,000 down, he lost a lot more if he walks away from the deal. So that's why you look at the buyer's equity or their down payment or their upfront money. That's an indication of the value. So a buyer that puts down 10% is better than a buyer that puts down 1%. The third thing, the fourth thing that's important is the actual interest rate. The interest rate on the note. So if you have a note, if you have a mortgage debt that pays 10% or 12%, that is better than a mortgage note that only pays 5% or 4%. So if you had a choice between two notes, two mortgage debts, and the first paid 5% and the second paid 10%, the one that paid 10% is better. The next factor that drives value is the history the history of the payments. So when you buy these mortgage debts, you want to look at how long has the person been making payments. You, you want to be careful buying a new note. You want to see a record of how long the person has been making payments. So if a person has a 30 year note, a 30 year note, and they are four years into a 30 year note, where they still have 26 years left, that is safer if you see a record of payments compared to a 30-year note that the person put the down payment down, but they haven't yet made their first payment. Because what if the person just walks away? What if they don't make that payment? Then you've bought a note that is a non-performing note. You want to buy a performing note. A performing note is more valuable 
than a non-performing note because then you don't have any work to do. You just buy the note and the, and the borrower makes payments to you. So a performing note is better and the history of performance is important. The next factor that drives value, the sixth factor is the actual paperwork, the legal paperwork, if it was done properly. Because if you have a note that was just two guys that were sitting around a kitchen table and they worked out a deal and they wrote it up without a lawyer where they just wrote up an agreement and they signed it, that is less valuable because the note likely has mistakes. They're not lawyers. They just agreed that, yeah, I'll make payments to you for 30 years. Did they remember to put in any of the legal language? Did they know how to put any of the legal language in? These things are important. That type of note is less valuable than a note that had a proper closing at a legitimate company with legitimate lawyers that drafted the paperwork. Because you know that it's very likely that if you buy that note and the borrower doesn't make payments to you, you have legal recourse. You don't want to buy a note that hasn't been drafted properly, that doesn't have proper legal paperwork. So very important there. Yeah, so that's really relevant for note buying. You need to be able to know the value of what you're buying. And those are the factors that we look at with Alamo Mortgage Holdings. We take care of all of that for you. Okay, so now let's take an example here. This is, uh, uh, this is a real property. It's located in Sweetwater, Texas, but it's not actually one that's in our portfolio. I just show it for illustration purposes. So the sales price is 120,000. A buyer put down 20,000. The mortgage debt is 100,000. And the monthly payment on the mortgage is $877 per month. So after five years of payments, the remaining debt, since it's a mortgage, uh, uh, the, even though the five years of payments, the unpaid principal balance is now 96,574. So let's imagine that a seller wants to sell that, they could offer that note. And most cash buyers would probably want to make an offer at say 12% yield. You know, it could be, it depends on the cash buyer, it depends on what they're looking for, but notes are still a bit illiquid. So that can that can definitely happen. Um, and that uh, in that scenario, if they agreed to sell the note for eighty three thousand three twenty two, the equity in the note would be thirty six thousand six seventy seven. So that is one of the nice things about notes is if you buy them at a discount, you get a higher yield and you get instant equity. So now let's talk about something that is so so relevant to our friends in the United Kingdom. I want to talk. I want to show this chart here that shows the British pound how it has lost value against the U.S. dollar, and this is a long-term uh, table. It actually shows since Bretton Woods Agreement towards the end of World War II in 1945, one British pound bought four American dollars, and now if we fast forward to the first of January 2023. One British pound only buys a dollar twenty-one. So the British pound has lost a a lot of buying power compared to the U.S. dollar, and uh, that is something that's relevant because uh, in the next slide we'll talk about that, and it's something that I want our friends in the U.K. to think about because getting an eight percent return in the U.K. is not the same thing as an eight percent return in the U.S. So uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more, but uh, let's take a look at what, what are so, some packages of mortgage notes. Here's an actual package of mortgage notes so you can see what it looks like. So this right here is actually an example of what a portfolio of loan notes might look like. So this is, a, this is actually a real portfolio and uh, you look here and you can see the name of the borrower, the number of months, you can see the interest rate. This, this debt is actually pretty high, 14.75% is what they're paying on that mortgage. The monthly payment is 278.50. Then you can see the terms, the status, this sort of thing. So, I mean, you've got a list here and this is an example of a package where, 
uh, a package of these mortgages can be purchased. This type of deal would be done by a larger uh, investor. It would not typically be a single investor that would buy this package. For example, uh, my company, Alamo Mortgage Holdings, this is the type of package that we might actually purchase something like this. But if you're just starting out in investing, you, you, you know, you might start out by you're just going to buy one mortgage note. So for example, you might come in and this mortgage note, uh, if you find something like this out on the market, you might try to negotiate down from, you know, the unpaid balance of 89,570. Maybe you try to buy it for 59,000 or 69,000, but that would be one note, but you can also bar purchase packages of notes. And that's something that Alamo Mortgage Holdings is uh, involved with. It's a company that's a United Kingdom company that actually purchases packages of mortgage notes. So wanted to give you an idea of what a package of notes looked like. Fantastic. So that is what Alamo Mortgage Holdings for focuses on. We acquire packages of mortgage notes in the United States and Texas for you. And then you can get passive income and you just purchase our bond. You get 8%. It works out great. So why bonds? That is sometimes a question that I get. People will say, well, you know, with inflation so high, why would I want a bond? Well, that is a great question. Uh, the answer is, well, instead of me giving my answer, I'm going to talk about Harry Markowitz, who was a Nobel Prize winning economist. And he's actually considered the grandfather of portfolio building. So if you've got an account at Merrill Lynch or Charles Schwab or, you know, any of these big brokerages, uh, a lot of the decisions they make are based on this modern portfolio uh, theory. But the interesting thing is, Harry Markowitz, he won that 1990 Nobel Prize for economics for the work in portfolio building. But but when it came to his own portfolio, he didn't he didn't do it that way. He actually had a much different way. What he did was he would split half of his portfolio into bonds and half of his portfolio into stocks. And then once a year, he would adjust. So if the stocks went up a great deal in value, he would sell some stocks and he would buy more bonds. Or if the stocks went down a great deal in value, he would actually, in that case, do the opposite where he would sell bonds and buy stocks. Uh, so that is something that's worth considering. You might want to think about what percentage of your portfolio is in bonds. And if you do have a portfolio and have some that's in bonds, you should think what percentage is dollar denominated versus British pound. Because if you feel that you're, you would like to get to that 50% in bonds, that is something that Alamo Mortgage Holdings can easily help you with. So why do we secure our mo no mortgage notes with Texas mortgage debt? Well, first of all, there's a lot of reasons. Texas is a state that's growing and it's winning. We've got people moving in from New York, from California. They love Texas because things are better in Texas in terms of price levels. There's less regulation in this has an effect of creating more demand for Texas real estate because as people sell their expensive property in California and they sell their expensive property in New York, they go to Texas and they look around at our prices and they say, wow, these things here are so inexpensive. I'm going to buy a house. Maybe I'll buy two houses. So the point is it, it drives up the prices of Texas real estate. And that is a good thing for us because Alamo Mortgage Holdings, our collateral is Texas real estate. So the higher the value of our collateral, the better it is for us and the better it is for our bondholders. And that's the reason we focus on Texas. So let's talk about some of the key features of the bond. With the Alamo Mortgage Holding bonds, you can reach your, your income goals more quickly. Whatever your goal is, we can help you get there. You can also get maximum diversification. Instead of doing one asset where you buy one note or you buy one rental property, when you invest with Alamo Mortgage Holdings, we acquire a variety of mortgage debt, including residential and commercial mortgages in the state of Texas. We also don't charge any fees. Now, you know, a lot of the private equity guys and the hedge fund guys, I'm sure you've spoken with some of them. And I, I, those guys are great. You know, many of my friends are, are those guys. Uh, you know, but uh, they do love their fees. They absolutely love their fees. And they'll tell you about the two and 20 fee and all the different things that they love. And they'll tell you about carried interest provision. 
But with uh, with what we're doing here, we don't charge any fees. And the interesting thing is if you compare it to private equity, one third of those fail, completely fail. One third of those break even and the remaining third actually make money. So a lot of people chase that private equity carrot and then it's like they get hit upside the head when they find out, oh, I've, I've got a two thirds chance of uh, the best I can get is I break even. That's not a very good odd. It, it might be better to get uh, something like an allowable mortgage holdings bond if you want something that's based on collateral. That 8% doesn't sound so bad now, does it, compared to a loss? Very good, very good. Uh, we also offer interest payment flexibility where we we don't, you know, we let you get your payments uh, semi-annually or annually. Here's how it works. You invest 100,000 pounds, you get 108,000 pounds, you invest 100,000 pounds. If you were to do it for five years, you get 140,000 pounds. For 50 years, you'd get 500,000 pounds. So simple. Okay, let's talk about the why should I invest in the notes? Well, I believe that you should invest in the note if you want an above average return. That is what we're in the business of is the above average return. Uh, if you if you want the security of a note that's asset backed, I can't tell you how many investors have gotten burned doing things that are not asset backed. How long is the note? It's three, five, or 50 years. Can you put the notes into your self-invested personal pension? That actually depends on your plan's administrator, but there's no reason I can see that you would not be able to. And if you have a situation where maybe your, your administrator doesn't understand, please show them this video. Uh, and if they still don't understand, have them call us. We can we can work with them. We can help them. Uh, and we also know a lot of other SIP administrators. So if you've got one that just is not getting it, doesn't want to cooperate, just let us know. We can we can introduce you to another SIP administrator. Uh, what type of investment is it? Uh, UK corporate income bonds. Is it a regulated product? No, this is not a regulated product in the UK. And that's part of the reason that we can pay so much more. The regulation is a very expensive burden for business. And uh, by not being regulated, that's the reason that we can pay so much more. But we are secured. So we are secured. Uh, who can invest? Well, you need to be one of these. You could be over 18, a trust, a company, a, a charity, um, a business. Come one, come all. We welcome you. Uh, you should be an accredited investor. How's the money protected? We offer multiple layers of protection. We can go over that on a on, one-on-one call. Can you invest through a company and joint applications permitted? Yes. Uh, how? So that's uh, that's basically it. How's the tax managed? We don't deduct any taxes from your money. We pay all the money to you. Then you get all the money, and you and your tax professional decide what amount of taxes you should pay based on your marginal tax rate or whatever your tax planning strategy is. Are there any limits on how much you can invest? No, we can support large placements from institutional investors. And if you are an institutional investor, we can work with you very closely to make sure that we are on track with what you need in the product. Um, can you get access to the money early? No, folks. And that's actually, in some cases, an advantage. And let me tell you why. They have done studies with these day traders where they will go and they'll get a brokerage account and, oh, I'm going to look at a chart. Oh, it went down. I better sell it. Oh, it went up. I better buy it. And they have found that the people that do that sort of uh, sort of trading where they're always clicking on a mouse to buy and sell, all it does is run up fees and hurt their return. With this, you're able to make a decision one time, place the money for a few years, earn a very good, solid passive income. It just works out better. But the answer is no, we're not designed to, to give the money back early. How we give it back at the end of the term based on our agreement, whatever we agreed to. How will I receive the interest? We pay it to any bank account that you nominate. Uh, how do you invest? It's easy, folks. Just send us a message on the con on the website. Go to alamomortgageholdings.co.uk. Let us know you're interested. We can uh, we can help you with everything. We make the process very simple. Okay, folks. So that is our presentation for today. I want to thank everyone for coming. And now I'm going to actually stop the recording and I'll open it up to questions. And if for some reason you're watching this maybe on the internet and you missed this. We offer these every week 
every Thursday at 1 p.m. UK time. So you can go to our webinar, just go to LinkedIn and look for Alamo Mortgage Holdings and you can find the webinar there or go to www.alamomortgageholdings.co.uk, fill out the contact form and we will be happy to send you an invitation to our free webinar. All right, folks, thank you so much. And now I'm gonna stop this and open it up for any uh, any questions.